The Chicago Bears saw the 2017 second overall pick Mitchell Trubisky take the field yet again on Sunday Night Football against the Green Bay Packers. He did not have the greatest performance. Today we're going to be breaking it down. Is the Trubisky era over in Chicago with his contract season coming to a close? Today we're going to discuss it in episode number 98 of Uncut. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Thank you for joining us yet again. I hope you guys like the new setup. Uh, we're going to get camera quality, uh, everything up and running uh, back again soon. Feels good to be back on face cam, though. So for all of you watching on YouTube, I would like to say uh, December is going to be our month. So we are going to be double uploading, trying to double upload every day of December. So be on the lookout for that. But welcome back, guys, today discussing Mitchell Trubisky. I am your host, Chris Malpe. To the right of me, I am joined by my co-host, Parsh Shaw, as well as Jalen McClinton. Guys, how's it going? Doing pretty good. Um, getting excited for the, I guess, the Pittsburgh-Baltimore game that's supposed to kick off in 25 minutes. Some afternoon football. You love to see it. Jalen, are you going to be tuning into that game? How's it going, buddy? I didn't, I didn't even, first of all, I didn't even know that was in 25 minutes. I thought that was like, you know, like 3.40 so I, p.m., yeah. Wow, that's a, that's that's interesting uh, on a Wednesday, but uh, feels good to do face cam. Um, we haven't done face cam in like I think some years, so uh, I we were a little pip squeaks the last time. We yeah, did I look cam. completely different. I got a whole beard now. I got dreads. Look at me, like bro. <laughs> I, I haven't shaved yet. No shave November's over. I got, I got but, the uh, beard now, honey, and I can finally shave. I'm off. the only one not wearing beard down merch. I got my school merch, but we also got the new outlay uh, so, or, uh, overlay, so I, I think it looks pretty good. So let us know what you think down in the comments. It still feels pretty nostalgic being able to see you guys when I'm recording these, but yeah. uh, let's hop right into it. So Trubisky, obviously, uh, when we told Jalen that we were recording this topic, he left the call for about a minute, wasn't too happy about it, but we dragged him back in. He is here today. So Jalen, I'm going to start with you. Obviously, we saw Nick Foles come in. And obviously, I think we can all admit right now, in, in your benefit, that it didn't happen at the right time. Nick Foles was not inserted at the right time. But we saw Mitchell Trubisky come back in on Sunday Night Football. We saw him make some costly mistakes. Uh, both of his interceptions were very bad throws. Also had a, an unlucky fumble. So I want to ask you, I mean, I, I think it's pretty set in stone. But in your mind, is the Trubisky era over in Chicago after this season? I think it's been over since week three when he first got benched. Um I know this this happened months ago, you know, of course, back when the Bears didn't have a didn't have a loss on their record. Now we have six, five straight that he wasn't going to be back after he got benched against the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, you know, people still talk about I, I don't think it was justified. I don't think he should have been benched at that certain point. Who knows? He could have got benched the week after that or the week after that. But um, at that certain time, I don't feel like he, he should have been on the bench. I think week four, he should have still been the starter against the Colts. Uh, that was so. Yeah, I definitely feel like the the, the the era is over. You know, it's sad to see. We drafted him with the second overall pick, traded up for him. He we brought in all this uh all this talent on the offensive side of the ball to for him to produce. You know, he did produce for that one season in twenty eighteen when we went twelve and four. He was eleven eleven and three as a starter and uh of you know, led us to almost a playoff and let us down the field and of course, you know, everybody knows the notorious double doink. Uh so if I feel like if we would have won that game, you know, I, I feel like that team could have won the Super Bowl. We had the, one of the best defenses of all time, in my opinion. You know, we were getting turnovers, uh, like like on an amazing great scoring points um, from the offense, something that we haven't seen. If we would have won that game, I, I really do feel like that team could have won the Super Bowl. So if, maybe if we would have won that game and, and lost against If we the won that game, Trubisky probably already would have signed an extension by now. I would have Exactly. Uh, I, that's what uh, I was going to say. I think if we would have won that game, Mitchell Trubisky as a player – um, as a Chicago Bears quarterback, will be looked at totally different. So, sadly, I do think the era is over. I think we're going to draft a quarterback. Um, we won our first, uh, first, you know, two picks in the first or second round, and that uh, we're going to get rid of Mitch. And, and it's sad for me to say I'm a huge Mitch supporter. Uh, I was banging on him to come in and prove everybody wrong. I mean, he still has uh, what five games um, as as a starter, more than likely. Uh, that Nick Foles is still still going to be out to prove people wrong, but um, I definitely don't see us giving him any uh, extension. I think he's playing for an extension or a contract for, for another team. Yeah. Uh, I think now is the time when Trubisky's trying to show other teams, as Jalen just noted, that <clears throat> he's going to be worth coming in and deserves another shot either as a starter or competing for that starter slash backup role. So it should be interesting to see where Trubisky goes. I think there's a lot of good fits for him 
So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that later. I think there's a couple teams he could go uh, that could be good. But once again, I got to agree with you, Jalen. I, I, I do think the era is over. It's unfortunate. But I think with the end of Trubisky era comes probably the end of the Matt Nagy era as well as possibly even the Ryan Pace era. I mean, you look at Matt Nagy, and we talked about this yesterday, me and Parth, when we did our Three Reasons Why video. But it seems like Nagy... Foles was his guy. He, he he moved on from Trubisky. He didn't believe in Trubisky. And now he's putting him back in and, and showing himself that he's wrong. Not only is he wrong for putting Trubisky back in because he was wrong doing it, taking him out in the first place, but also he's wrong not giving up play calling too, uh, too early. So if Matt Nagy makes it past the 2020 season in Chicago, I think he's going to be on the hottest seat heading into 2021. Uh, it should be interesting. But I think Trubisky era, uh, unfortunately, it's over. Um, I, I've always loved Mitch. Uh, I was rooting for him big time, probably up until twenty at the end of the middle of the 2019 season, uh, when I thought he was going to take a huge jump. Uh, he's always come in, he's said the right things, he's worked hard, but unfortunately, it hasn't worked out. So I'm going to pass it along to Parth now. Parth, you've been Trubisky Nation on Instagram. You were for quite some time. It's 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 where you earned your respect. It's where you earned all your followers. Uh, and some people still want you to even change it back to this day. But you've been a Trubisky guy forever. Um, in regards to this podcast this year, we've seen J- Jalen really uh, lately take the stance of the Trubisky guy, and we've even seen him hop off as of recently, uh, as of today. But you were the Trubisky guy for quite some time, and I'm sure it hurts you to answer this question. Uh, is his time in Chicago going to be up after the 2020 season? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think he's just playing for a job now. Hey, he's out here testing the market. Hopefully he stays healthy. You know, If you can stay healthy and play – decently well enough to get him a job next year i think that'd be good for him uh you know his time in chicago uh sadly didn't work out you know we've we've had troubles with the offensive line he's had troubles playing with matt Nagy, and he's just you know not performed at times um you know jalen mentioned that playoff game against the eagles where things could have turned around and he, you said he could have got an extension if we won that game or get to another game against the if Rams. If we win the and, Super Bowl, I think he would have signed an extension that offseason because oh, yeah, everyone would most, have been so confident that he was going to be the guy moving forward if we won the freaking Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And I think his confidence would have only shot up too. I mean, imagine like if that happened. But, you know, here we are basically breaking everything apart, you know, with Trubisky, I guess, not getting an extension. I think Ryan Pace deserves to get fired, and so does the head coach, Matt Nagy. Yeah, um, you know, it's interesting that you bring up an extension because after Jared Goff brought the Rams to the Super Bowl, we saw him sign what back then was the biggest extension. Now it's not even close because obviously with with money and, and how inflation works, everyone continues to get paid more and more. But Jared Goff at the time did end up getting that big contract. So I think this should be a pretty short answer for you guys. But obviously Nick Foles has a binding contract with a player option. Luckily for the Bears, he did bring it down more to a contract where it's like a backup quarterback contract. I think he's only getting around five to seven million per year minus incentives. I'm sure he'll get a little bit more this year because he uh, might end up with more passing yards than Trubisky and other stuff like that. But he didn't bring us to the playoffs. He's not going to be a Pro Bowler. We're not going to be in the Super Bowl. Uh, and I'm saying he didn't bring us to the playoffs, and we still have a chance to make the playoffs. So um, I want to ask you guys. Obviously, Foles' contract is binding, and moving forward. It does make sense to keep Foles in Chicago if there is a young quarterback in Chicago because Foles has been someone throughout time that has played that mentor role, has been able to go on the bench and willingly teach others what he's known, and he's certainly been a journeyman throughout his time in the league. So, Jalen, I'm going to pass it back around to you right now. Do you think there's any chance that the Bears bring back Trubisky as the backup, or do you agree with me that it makes sense that Foles is that guy that is that mentor in 2021? I would bring Trubisky back as a backup, to be honest. Um, like I said, at this point, he's fighting for uh, an opportunity on another team, not named the Bears. I'm sure he'll have a better chance on another team from what it seems yeah, like. Yeah, more, more than likely. I know, I know you said we're going to probably talk about it, but I can't wait to say this one team that I think will fit perfectly for me. But I, I would bring him back as a backup, you know. He's not going to get paid um, like I thought before, you know, this season. If he had a good season, he's probably going to franchise tag him, tell him to do it again, and didn't pay him in the 2021 offseason. Uh, so I would bring him back up to backups. He's probably going to be cheap. You give him like $10 million, two-year deal, you know, just to be a backup quarterback. Mitchell is still talented. You know, he's obviously, he was obviously the number two pick in the NFL draft for a reason. Even, even if he wasn't drafted number two, he was still going to go in the first round, probably still would have been top ten. 
he has he has uh NFL talent. He's he showed us, he showed Bears fans, he showed NFL fans that he can play in this league, just not at a consistent level. And that's 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 what matters. You know, you have to be consistent at it. You can't throw four touchdowns one game and the next game throw four interceptions and expect to, to remain a starter quarterback in the NFL. So uh I would bring him back, but I can see what you mean as for I just feel like that Foles is not um athletic enough to be a starting quarterback behind this offensive line. You know, when he has time in the pocket, possibly, you know, he, he's a good quarterback. I guess he knows how to read a defense. He showed that uh, for us. That's why I mean, one of the reasons why we won the game against the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He made a, an amazing audible for David Montgomery to get open and got us a, a game on the field goal for Carol Santos. So um, I feel I, I, I probably see Pace, you know, keeping foes around for him to help him. A young quarterback, whoever we draft, is out close and Kyle Trask, whoever. But uh, in my personal opinion, I would probably keep Mitch, but I wouldn't be surprised if we did keep Nick Foles as a mentor and probably start a couple of games until we're comfortable for our rookie to come in. Well, one place where I'm hopeful for 2021 is I hope that the offensive line will be improved after years of porous offensive line play, meaning probably ever since 2018, even in 2018, it was still pretty shaky. Uh, I would hope that this offseason, and as sad as it sounds, Ryan Pace maybe tries to move on from some of the defensive pieces to try and not only gain some picks, but also regain some of that salary cap because the Bears aren't in the greatest situation right now. Uh, The Bears are going to have picks rounds one through three. You would hope that – I would hope personally that those first three rounds, depending on what happens with Allen Robinson – you take a wide receiver, a quarterback, and an offensive lineman, or maybe a quarterback and two offensive linemen. And then also you focus on getting offensive linemen and free agency. So in regards to that Nick Foles statement about him not being able to perform around this offensive line, I absolutely agree with you. But I do think that it will improve moving forward, and that only benefits him. Unluckily, uh, if that's a word, uh, for uh, Ryan Pace, it's it's not up to him whether or not Foles comes back, actually, Jalen. Uh, Nick Foles has a player option uh, on his contract where he's the one that decides whether or not he wants to leave Chicago or come back. So it's up to him. Uh, the contract is, is binding towards his favor. So that's why I think he's going to be back in Chicago. Uh, I think after he's done in Chicago, he probably heads for retirement. He's getting up there in age. But uh, I, I do think he's the one that's going to be back. And I just think because of the time he spent in the NFL, it makes sense for him to do. So, so, um, so let, me ask you, let me ask you this before we move on. Yeah. Do you think he picks it up because he feels like he can be our starting quarterback next year? Well, I just think he stays because he's getting paid and he can choose to get paid if he wants to. It makes sense. I think he's always been someone who's been willing to go to the bench if need be. How I think it plays out next year is probably full starting in the beginning. I think they do a Miami Dolphins type situation, what we see with Ryan Fitzpatrick and Tua Tagovailoa right now. I think looking at that, that probably makes sense. That's how I would like it to line up with a younger guy, give him four, five, six weeks to sit on the bench and then obviously – Foles knows, and he's been someone to know in the past when it's time to head to the bench and it's time for someone new. He knew it with Carson Wentz. Uh, he, I guess he knew it with Gardner Minshew, even though his time in Jacksonville is going to be limited. Uh, but I think that's how it ends up playing out. So, Parth, I'm going to pass it back around to you. It seems like it makes sense for Nick Foles to stay as the backup. Uh, do you think there's any chance that the Bears end up bringing back Trubisky as a backup? I also, before I ask you that question, I also I, I forgot to bring up this point. I don't think it makes sense to have Trubisky back as the backup, assuming that Foles accepts his money and comes back. Uh, I don't think having three great quarterbacks is going to do you much unless Trubisky's taking like veterans minimum money, and I think he could probably get more money elsewhere. So, Part, do you think there's any chance that Trubisky is back in 2021 as a backup quarterback? No, I think his time in Chicago is coming to an end. I know he knows that too. He's going to try to head out to a team where he can, you know, be a backup or even maybe try to compete for the starting job. I don't know if there's going to be teams that are going to have that situation for him. But, you know, if he finds one, I think that's what he's going to try to find for himself. And then for the Bears with Nick Foles, I think Nick Foles is going to stay. I think it makes sense for him financially just to, you know, stay in Chicago. And hey, I he's doubt getting paid regardless. Exactly. So. I know. So I, I, I feel like he might, he's gonna he's probably going to accept that contract and stay uh, and then hopefully mentor the rookie quarterback. But I, I disagree with you on one thing. I, I actually don't want to see Foles start next year. I don't. I, I would I, probably I, prefer that the rookie starts as well. But just with how things trend in the NFL, I don't think that's how it will happen. True. But I, at, at this point, I wouldn't mind just putting the rookie out there and you know, just learn it from the beginning. I think, you know, guys like Justin Herbert and Joe Burrow basically doing that and they played really well this year. So. Yeah, uh, and that's interesting. You know, uh, it, it should be interesting to see where Trubisky goes as we head into this topic. Obviously, we all assume that Trubisky is going to enter free agency. So I want to ask you guys, before we talk about specific teams that could possibly go to, do you think that Trubisky deserves another shot as a starter, 
or he will compete for a starting and backup role? Is it going to be a situation where he goes in and Mitch, you're the starter somehow? I don't really see any situations where it would play out like that. But do you think that happens or he's competing uh, for a starting role with someone else? Jalen, let's start with you. Just, just the Mitch supporter in me, I would say, yes, he deserves another chance at a, at a starting quarterback with a different head coach that actually believes in him. Um, just in a different environment, you know, sometimes a different environment, you know, brings the best out of people. So that's what I feel like with him. But, uh, yeah, definitely. I definitely think he, he deserves to at least have another chance to even be a, a, a backup on the team. I feel like after the season, Mitchell Trubisky still needs to be in the NFL. Yeah, uh, I got to go ahead and agree with you. I don't think he essentially – I think there's instances where you could say that he could go compete for a starting job, but I think he'll be competing for a starter slash backup job, uh, especially with the team that I'm thinking of that I think he could be headed to. But, Parth, I'm going to pass it back around to you. Do you think wherever Mitch ends up, he en- he deserves to be the outright starter of the team, or do you think he'll be competing for that job? I think he's a backup quarterback at best right now. Um, you know, there's no way – And I totally understand that side of the argument as well. Yeah, I don't. I don't think there's a starting role for him right now in the NFL. I think there's 32 better quarterbacks than him in the NFL right now. Okay, Nick Foles included. Uh, no. Okay. Um. So finally, before we close this one off a little bit longer of an uncut for us, uh, let's try and name different teams that we could see Mitch going to. But if we agree, we can say the same one. I'm going to start off. I think somewhere that Mitch would. Worked perfectly is the San Francisco 49ers. I've got an inkling that J- – oh, I thought Jalen was going to say the New England Patriots. But uh, I'm going to go with the huh? – Oh, my God. That was my second team, but I was thinking of the Niners. Okay. Oh, my God, Chris. I okay, well, I'll keep going. Uh, Jalen, you can agree with me. It's fine. But, you know, you take a look at the quarterback situation right now <laughs> in San Francisco, and they obviously have Jimmy Garoppolo, Nick Mullins, who I think is a solid backup, but they don't have anyone solidified there. And I think if you bring him in – with Kyle Shanahan, I think Shanahan can scheme to Mitch's strengths. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is untrustworthy. I think Nick Mullins is one of the top tier backups in the league, but he's not going to cut it as a starter. So if there's anywhere for Mitch to go and, and anywhere I think he could succeed, I'd probably say San Francisco. They have a better offensive line. They have solid offensive weapons, young offensive weapons with Debo Samuel, as well as Brandon Ayuk and George Kittle. So it should be interesting uh, to see where he ends up. But I think San Francisco provides the perfect situation for him. They can get him on a cheap deal, uh, possibly end up ditching Mullins, which could provide a backup for another team. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind Nick Mullins as my backup. I don't think he's absolutely terrible, but that's a conversation for another day. There were conversations last offseason uh, that the Bears were looking into Mullins as uh, trading for him as a possible starter uh in, in in a lot of the same names that surfaced last year are going to surface again this year cam newton will be a free agent again assuming that the patriots look to draft someone young uh in, in the top 10 picks so but um yeah I, I i think uh if the door is open anywhere for trubisky to go if the scheming fits right it, it, i think the perfect situation has to be in san francisco so jalen i'm going to pass it back around to you right now you can agree with me if you want you can say another team i know you've spoken about New England in the past, but where do you think Trubisky could end up in 2021? Uh, so, like I said, I was going to say the 49ers just because of Kyle Shanahan being there. Probably the one of the, probably, in my opinion, that's one of the, uh, he's definitely a top three play caller, you know, opposite of Sean McVay and, of course, Andy Reid, of course. So, but I'm going to go in New England here. Just him going to, to the Patriot way, as they like to call it. Bill Belichick is a great head coach, best head coach of all time, in my opinion. He won six rings for a reason. He's basically made nobodies into somebody's. Like J.C. Jackson, he was a, uh, he's a somebody that I wanted the Bears to draft. I think that was 2018 uh, when he came out of Maryland. He went undrafted, and now he's leading the league in interceptions. He's had uh, interceptions in, like, six straight weeks. So he's made he turned an undrafted corner into possibly all, bro. Who knows um, after the season. So I feel like, especially with Cam Newton not being the best, uh, passing right now, Cam Newton is still an asset just because he's been one of the best runner, running quarterbacks of all time. Uh, that, that's what Bill Belichick is using. Uh, he's using his legs and, you know, not so much his arm. He threw, he had like 84 yards and two interceptions against the um, against the Cardinals, and they still found found, find, found a way to uh, win the game, just Bill Belichick being a good head coach. So with Mitchell Trubisky's talent, you know, Bill Belichick as the head coach, I really feel like Mitchell can strive um, – as a quarterback there, you know, I, I would hate to see it because pe- people would come back, oh, my God, you, yeah, that's what you get for letting Mitchell go. So I, I would love to see him 
um, in New England, you know, surround him with a lot of they have a, a lot of good receivers. Um, I, I guess you could say uh, in New England, and they have a very good offensive line with a very good head coach. So I definitely feel like he could thrive there. But I just want him to get an opportunity, and I feel like New England is a uh, is a place where he can get an opportunity, even if they draft a quarterback. Yeah, especially if they move on from Cam Newton, I, I think he's been okay for them. Uh, mm-hmm. Very good in the beginning of the season, shaky in the middle, yeah. and he's starting to pan out a little bit more now. Uh, and, and he, I mean, you take a look at New England, and there's a ton of players that we wouldn't know about that are names we're going to remember, at least for our generation, for quite some time because of the New England Patriots. Guys like Sony Michelle, Julian Edelman, Danny Amendola, uh, and, and a lot of good defensive Malcolm, players Malcolm on that team Butler. as well. Uh, Donta Hightower, Jamie Collins, J.C. Jackson, uh, Deron Harmon. So there's a ton of pieces there. Uh, that Bill Belichick has developed one of the best teams in the league at developing players. They obviously have a down year, but it seems like they're going to draft a quarterback. So, Parth, there's a lot of other teams you could choose. You can choose a, a similar one to us if you want. There's not great quarterback situations right now with the Washington football team, the Atlanta Falcons, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Who's no, Who knows what's going to happen with Dak Prescott down in Dallas? You would hope that they'd pay their guy after what happened to him. But where do you think Trubisky could end up heading after the 2020 season? How about the Cleveland Browns? I mean, oh, why not? Interesting. Why not? I mean, you know, Baker Mayfield struggled at times. I mean, I think he's been playing really well so far this year. But, you know, if Baker has one of those down years where he throws a lot of interceptions and looks pretty bad at times, I think Trubisky could step up in that role. I think that offense is pretty simple. I think Trubisky likes that offense, you know, that play-action type offense, uh, run the ball a lot, you know, not much quarterbacking going on, just being a game manager. I think that's what Trubisky is. It's the type of offense I think Alex Smith also likes to run too. So you know, I think Trubisky is actually pretty could could be pretty good at that. And I think, you know, if Baker struggles or ever something happens to him, I think Trubisky could be a pretty good backup on that team. Yeah, uh, and they've got some of the best weapons in the league. I'm not mm-hmm. sure how long they have Case Keenum signed for. I know they have him as a backup right now. Uh, and I think once again he's one of the top tier backups in the league. So should be interesting. There's going to be a lot of options for Mitchell Trubisky this offseason. I still think he's going to deserve another shot somewhere else. So we shall see where he heads, but a very long episode of uncut for us. Thank you guys so much for tuning into episode number 98 of uncut. If you want more content from us, head over to our website, beardown.com. We're posting columns, articles, and blogs every day up there uh, to get you guys ready for the bears. this week 13 matchup with the Detroit lions. We're also once the offseason gets around, I'm sure we're going to be writing a ton of articles about the topics of a lot of these uncuts that we're making. So should be uh, looking forward to that. So be sure to check out our website if you want. We're going to have our Christmas giveaway on social media in about two weeks. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter at Bear Down. We're trying to give back to you guys each and every month. So head down to the description. The links to those are there. Free to enter giveaways. And uh, we love the support you guys give us and are always going to give back to you guys. Uh, I would like to say one thing before I talk about our social medias. We're going to be live streaming live streaming every game for the rest of the season. Uh, we answer your guys' questions. We give analysis. We do play-by-play commentary. We're also going to start doing probably some miniature giveaways, maybe some money giveaways uh, during those live streams. So be sure to look out for those. Normally they start about 20 minutes, 30 minutes before the game on this YouTube channel. Be sure to look out for that. Double uploads every day in December. We are back on our grind. And once again, all of our social media accounts are down in the description, uh, all three of us, Instagram and Twitter. Please be sure to go check those out. It's a great way to interact with us, and we're very active on all three platforms, except for Jalen on Instagram, but I'm sure he'd still answer your DMs if you DM'd him. So Parshaw, Jalen McClinton, a longer one here. Uh, we all agreed parting waves with Mitchell Trubisky is pop- probably uh, the upcoming move. So any last words before we close this one out? Any uh, farewells to Trubisky? Obviously, still five more weeks, but uh, <laughs> any last words? No, I just want to see how he does for these, I guess, five weeks that he has a chance to prove himself. It's going to be fun. I mean, uh, I personally wouldn't mind if we lost out. You know, I wouldn't mind tanking for a better pick. But, you know, if he can win a game here and there, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm sure you also wouldn't mind winning out. if that. I, I mean, I think we're all under the assumption that that isn't going to happen. But you would assume it, that it, it's out. still in reach if we win out. But I just don't think it's likely whatsoever. It, it, yeah, it's so hard to believe in winning out when you're on a five-game losing streak right now. Absolutely. So. Yeah, Jalen, any last words, buddy? Any uh, last words for Mitchell? <laughs> uh, I love you, David. I'll see you soon. Um, Is that but, his but, middle name? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. But, well, um, what, was, what was I about to say? Oh, I feel like we can – I actually feel like we can win out. We, you know, we play the Lions next week, then we, or this week, excuse me, then we play the Texans and 
the Vikings and the Jags are somewhere in there. I honestly think we can win out. Will it happen? Probably not, but I'm going to have my hopes up. Yeah, well, that'll pretty much do it for us, guys. It's been a pleasure to be your host. Once again, my name is Chris Malpe. Once again, double uploads coming all of December, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video if you made it this far. Bears fans, do us a favor, and as always, stay safe and bear down. Or in Bear Town. I said our channel name. Bear Down. We will see you guys later tonight with three key matchups in Bears versus Lions. We'll see you then. Peace.